Hello there, Jackson here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a bike check on my Squid So Easy build. I've had this thing for a little while now and when I built it up, I wanted it to really just be an all around smasher. Great for track lacrosse, obviously, commuting, riding street, but also doing tricks as well. I'm really stoked on how it turned out. I've got a couple of unique little tidbits on here that I'm really excited to share with you. So let's get into it. So starting with the frame, this is the Squid So Easy track lacrosse frame painted by yours truly. If you wanna see a video about that, click the link in the description. I am six foot one, 185 centimeters for those of you outside of the United States. And this frame is a 56. Personally, this bike feels a little bit too big for me. If it were a traditional track bike that I stayed in the saddle all the time, just rode straight, it'd probably be the, like the perfect size. But because it's a bike that I wanna be able to move around and whip around and do tricks on, I wish it were just a tad bit smaller. If you're interested in this frame, it's awesome. I would just recommend looking at the sizing and consider sizing down a little bit. Both front and rear, I'm running the WTB KOM iTuff 25 rims. That's a mouthful. They need to come up with a better name than that. Both of them are laced up to level hubs. The level hubs are really interesting. They've got a bolt on cog in the rear, which I really like. There's no slipping or anything like that. No need to mess around with a lock ring. They're awesome. If you want to learn more about them, I've got a whole video on it. Link in the description. One thing that's really interesting about this frame is that it's 135 spacing in the rear. Typical fixed gear bikes, Fix gear and fixed gear freestyle are 120 spacing in the rear. What I really like about this level hub is that I can use the same hub at 135 millimeter spacing and 120. It's really easy to do. I just have to change out a couple spacers and I can change the width back to 120. That's awesome. Shout out to level hubs. They were awesome in getting me this hub. I really, really like it. I used to have this hub a long, long time ago. It got stolen. I was really sad about it and I'm glad to have one on my bike again. For tires, I'm running 38 C's. I definitely could have gone a little bit bigger. These are the Panracer Gravel King SK. Kind of a nice middle ground in terms of tread. They still roll really nicely on pavement, but they've also got micro knobs to really grip into the dirt. So I am running this setup tubeless. It hasn't been quite as pain-free as some of my mountain bikes. There's been a little bit more, you know, trying to mess with getting it to seal and having slow leaks and that sort of thing. But once I finally did get it dialed in, it's been awesome. I've got a dropper post on here, which I've never seen on a fixed gear. I'm sure somebody has it. The seat post size on this frame is a 27.2, which is a little bit harder to find dropper posts. Uh, this one is a KS. I don't remember the exact name. It's by no means a fancy dropper post. It actually routes the cable on the outside rather than coming out into your frame, which I'm actually more stoked on. I didn't want to put a lever on my handlebars. One, because I want to be able to do bar spins. I also want to keep it super clean looking. I just ran the cable on the outside here. I've got a little heat chain pulley. I can just stop, pull that and lower the seat. I'm obviously not going to do it while I'm riding. I'm going to have to stop, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Up top here, I've got the Volt saddle. If you've seen any of my other bike checks, you know that I really love the saddle. Really durable, inexpensive, super comfy for me. I like it a lot. So let's move on to the cockpit. I'll come back to the drivetrain. That's one of my favorite parts, so gotta save the best for last. So right now I have the Soma Dream Bars. They're okay. They look interesting, unique for sure. They are a higher rise bar with a lot of back sweep. More back sweep than I'm you know, used to and really feel comfortable with. But they look cool, they're interesting. They've got kind of a moto style rise on them, a little bit of a later rise. Gives it like a, a clunker vibe, which this bike is kind of like, you know, a fixed gear clunker. For grips, I have the Ori lock-ons, which is a nice little homage to the early fixed gear days. They're not really that comfortable of grips. Maybe another reason that I don't really like this handlebar setup, but kind of a cool little touch. Poo. You don't get that. For the stem, I have a Thompson 70 millimeter. I ended up buying an extra faceplate in silver just because I thought it was kind of cool to <laughs> mash the colors together. Boo, leave your, no, I'm recording, dude. You gotta stop. I've got the Chris King on there. It's like a matte black. I don't remember exactly what they called the colorway. I've also got it flipped upside down. Evan told me to do that. I don't really know why, but apparently that's what the cool kids do. And below the headset is a special new old stock Chris King five millimeter extra extended crown race. 
wow, that was a mouthful. I saw that Chris King had this on their website, but they didn't actually sell it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I had to search forever across the internet and I finally found it on eBay one day. It's basically just your standard crown race, but it's five millimeters taller. The reason that I searched so hard for this thing and I have it on here is that I wanted to be able to bar spin. With this size of frame and a 38C tire, I don't think it bar spun. I think it hit just slightly. If you ran smaller tires on it, you could definitely get it to bar spin, but I wanted to just be able to run big tires, not worry about it, be able to bar spin. So that's where the special crown race came in handy. One thing about this setup is it makes the geometry feel a little bit funky. Uh, it raises the front end up, and in theory, it should slacken out the head tube a little bit. So I'm running BMX cranks on here. They are 160 60 millimeter resist cranks. Drop a comment if you remember resist, if you were around when resist existed. 160, that's really, really short. I wanted a shorter crank that one, I could bar spin really easily without worrying about toe overlap. And when I'm riding track lacrosse that I wouldn't have to worry about pedal strikes too much. The cons with having a shorter crank is that I get less leverage on the drivetrain. So it ends up feeling like my gear ratio is a little bit harder than it actually is. The gear ratio is 4318, which sounds really easy, but actually with these tires and riding track lacrosse in as steep of terrain as we have here, is actually a pretty hard gear ratio. I was surprised. For pedals, I have some plastic platform BMX pedals with some Why Not straps. Really love this setup. Makes it easy to get in and out of the straps, but I also get a ton of leverage. For the chain ring, this is a wild setup. So I have a profile BMX spider that attaches to the BMX cranks and it has a 144 BCD and that attaches to a ARN chain ring. This is the track lacrosse model 43 tooth. This is the this is the new school flex. I got the old school flex with the Chris King and the new school flex with the ARN ring. On the other side of the chain ring, I have a bash guard, which is kind of weird to put the bash guard on the inside of the chain ring, but it still does its job from you know direct up and down hits. I actually made this bash guard myself. I took an old Sugino 75 chain ring, grinded off all the teeth, and it fit pretty much perfect. I wish it were a tad bigger, but you know, oh well, I still think it looks pretty cool. For chain, I've got a Odyssey Bluebird. It's a BMX chain, pretty run of the mill, but works great, feels really strong. That's it for my bike check. Thanks for checking it out. Shout out to Squid and Level Components. Make sure you follow Foad on all the other channels. Check out foadgang.com for some gear. I'm gonna be shredding on this bike in some upcoming videos, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when those come out, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>